Han Solo's carbonite imprisonment surprised everyone who saw The Empire Strikes Back. But it also solved a peculiar problem that only Hollywood's most popular sci-fi franchise could have. As the middle chapter of George Lucas' original Star Wars trilogy, The Empire Strikes Back was designed to leave moviegoers wanting more. The sequel paid direct homage to the serialized cliffhanger style of storytelling that inspired the saga. But quite unlike those Saturday matinee serials, the next installment wasn't just a week away. When viewers walked out of Episode 5, they were facing a three-year wait for the trilogy's resolution, and many of them were steamed. Lucas played particularly rough with his newfound fanbase and Empire. Darth Vader dished out a lightsaber beatdown to young Luke Skywalker, slashing off his hand and informing him that he is, in fact, his father. No! No! But Luke actually got off relatively easy compared to Harrison Ford's Han Solo. The interstellar rogue was placed in suspended animation via carbonite and was ferried back to Jabba the Hutt's desert lair on Tatooine by the bounty hunter Boba Fett. He's no good to me dead. The film closes on our bruised, almost broken heroes watching Lando Calrissian and Chewbacca dart off in the Millennium Falcon to hopefully rescue Han. John Williams' soaring final musical cue achingly underscores the faint hope of the moment before slamming back into the main theme for the end credits. So why did Lucas and his friend and director Irvin Kirshner go so hard? On one hand, this was just good, high-stakes storytelling, but part of it might have also had something to do with ensuring that burgeoning superstar Ford would be back for the last chapter. According to Robert Sellers' Harrison Ford, a biography, Harrison Ford was nonplussed by the perturbed reaction to the second film's unresolved nature. As he cheekily told Starlog in 1981, I guess it really depends on what you want to go to a movie for. I figured that there was at least $11 worth of entertainment in Empire, so if you paid four bucks and didn't get an ending, you're still $7 ahead of the game. Of course, Ford owed his career in part to George Lucas, who had previously cast him as the hell-raising street racer Bob Falfa in American Graffiti. Ford would never abandon his friend, but that didn't mean his co-stars had to play fair and square with journalists desperate to reveal plot details for Return of the Jedi. According to Sellers, Mark Hamill particularly relished the opportunity to yank reporters' chains. As the actor teased in an interview during the Empire press tour, look at what's happening to Harrison. He wasn't at all sure whether he wanted to repeat his role, and he's not at all committed to doing it a third time. So George has left him in limbo and given himself the option. Solo is not vital to future stories. It's up to Harrison, I guess, as to whether Han comes back into the saga. George Lucas and 20th Century Fox did a superb job of keeping moviegoers off balance, heading into Return of the Jedi. Many suspected that Harrison Ford would get dethawed sooner rather than later, but screenwriter Lawrence Kasdan widely drew out Solo's recovery. It's surprisingly deep into Return of the Jedi that Han Solo is fully back in action, and not held prisoner by a giant space slug. I think my eyes are getting better. Instead of a big dark blur, I see a big light blur. Though the concluding chapter of the original trilogy gets a bit bogged down during its middle section, its first act is expertly paced and written, with our heroes getting it together just as they're about to become Sarlacc food. After that, the whole crew is reunited as they sprint into the grand finale and the assault on the second Death Star. The Empire Strikes Back might have annoyed moviegoers who expected a full hero's journey in one film, but Lucas was painting on a much bigger canvas. More than 40 years later, it's widely accepted that we wouldn't still be visiting the galaxy far, far away without that daringly dour middle installment. If Lucas hadn't given Harrison Ford his possible out, if Han Solo wasn't left in the bleakest possible place heading into the third chapter, would the trilogy have kept pop culture in its iron grip for so long? The fact that time has labeled The Empire Strikes Back the best of the original trilogy suggests not.